Now, we would like to start the closing session of the 13th Asian Pacific City Summit, Special Edition. Following opening session and the lecture from yesterday, today, we have four parallel sessions this morning on. Now, we hear from the moderator of what has been discussed in each group. The first report is of parallel session A, themed Innovation for Improving Citizens' Living Conditions to Leave No One Left Behind. Ms. Arai Yuko, if you please. Thank you very much. Um, hello, distinguished guests. My name is Yuko Arai, Urban Specialist for the World Bank. I would like to report back on parallel session A, Innovation for Improving Citizens' Living Conditions to Leave No One Behind. We had an excellent session this morning uh, with panelists from across the region and our parallel session report is consisted of three sections. One, the current situation and issues. Two, new perspectives and ideas. And thirdly, direction of the initiatives which points the way forward. Let me start with the first point. On the current situation and issues, the session acknowledged two points. Number one, the COVID-19 crisis had a significant impact on socially vulnerable people and revealed issues related to employment, education, and health care. To take care of the citizens, cities need to recognize the importance of an inclusive society where no one is left behind. The second point was that introducing new technologies and services is effective to improve the quality of life. However, it became clear that there are still barriers in major treatment that's among the socially vulnerable segments of the population, which cause problems such as digital divide. Meanwhile, technological advancement has also proven to be more effective in delivering livelihood services to vulnerable populations. Therefore, technology can be an equalizer for service delivery if they're used in an appropriate manner. The second section on the new perspectives and ideas that were discussed. The session underscored two points. Number one, the first step in realizing the society where no one is left behind is to share the basic understanding that the society should be developed with comfort of all members, including the socially vulnerable ones. Designing cities and services for the tail end of the distribution curve create livable cities for everyone. Secondly, the COVID-19 crisis has accelerated digital transformation into our lifestyles including the usage of AI, big data, skills development, and online learning for future generation, and telemedicine. Lastly, on the direction of the initiatives which points the way forward, the session concluded on three points. Number one, it is necessary to aim at realizing the well-being for everybody, where everyone is physically, mentally, and socially fulfilled. Secondly, to adapt our lifestyles to the COVID-19 crisis, there are examples of various innovations being utilized in this team. The creation of new technologies, services, and values will improve the quality of citizens' lives so that it is important to actively promote such innovation. The session also underscored that it is essential to place people at the heart of the use of technology and to stimulate the creation of solutions together with the citizens. The session also underscored that inclusiveness and services for citizens that are those uh, need, that are those that meet diverse needs and have design, functionality, and systems that are easy for everyone to use. Lastly, in order to realize innovation in daily life to leave no one behind, it is very essential to develop not only technology but also the infrastructure, systems, and policies that support it with the appropriate application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Arayuko. Next is the report of Parallel Session B, theme, Toward Achieving the Carbon Neutral Society. Mr. Kato Makoto, if you please. Your Honorable Mayor of Fukuoka City, um, Takashima Soizuro san, and also distinguished um, uh, Director of well, Korezawa-san um, of the uh, of UN have that uh, distinguished um, participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the um, parallel session um, B, Toward Achievements, Achieving a Carbon Neutral Society, I would like to report uh, the, the, the result of the uh, discussion. Likewise, 
my, um, uh, as my previous colleague mentioned, oh, I would like to uh, go with the frame of the, the three current um, situation and um, issues surrounding cities, and number two, um, news perspective and ideas, and three, direction of um, initiative. Starting uh, with the current situation and issues surrounding um, cities, uh, the session recognized that the rapid deterioration of climate change had led to the increasing number and, and severity of natural disasters. Together with the COVID-19 crisis, they have become major risks and obstacles for cities to achieve sustainable growth. And also it was recognized that environmental issues are not uh, only related to disasters, but such issues as air and water pollution and waste management and these causes of deterioration of living conditions, living environment for citizens. And there is a risk that economic rationality will take precedence over environmental conservation in the recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. The Paris Agreement, which came into effect in 2000, 2016, positioned cities as important actors um, in climate change. Traditionally, National governments have taken the lead efforts to address climate change, but now it is clear that roles and responsibilities for cities in these efforts are becoming more and more important. Um, based on this um, idea, we, we actually will, uh, came to uh, uh, discuss uh, that in the future, um, it will be important to take the perspective of mainstreaming environmental efforts as part of the um, growth strategies rather than um, just the cons constraints. And also it's important that addressing the climate change issues with involvement of different stakeholders, well this provides more opportunities for cities and uh, we can build a new partnership which can be useful for um, sustainable growth. Um, in the end, well, we, we came up with the uh, direction of initiative um, first of all, it is important for cities to set decarbonization targets and formulate action plans to contribute to the Paris Agreement, which encourages cities' proactive involvement in climate change issues. Furthermore, cities can develop more efficiently uh, by designing actions suited with the city's respective characteristics. In order to realize a decarbonized society, it is essential for cities to create movement for green recovery involving business and citizens and broader regional cooperation by neighboring cities to not only to implement local um, government projects. As environmental um, threats are growing global issues, it is important for cities to actively promote information sharing and dissemination and know-how um, through international conference and partnership, such as for this conference. So this is uh, my Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kato Makoto. Now, the next report is a parallel session C, theme, New Trends in Urban Policy Development, Responding to the New Normal. Dr. Aizawa Nobukido, if you please. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, Mayor, Mr. Takashima, the Director of the UN Habitat, Mr. Kurosawa, and all the audiences. It is my pleasure and my privilege to be reporting the panel report of the panel C, which we, which we discuss the new trends in urban policy development responding to the new norm. My name is Nobuhiro Aito from the Kyushu University. We discussed one of the most tough questions, which is how to cope with the new normal in the post-COVID era. We recognize the challenges of, first, the spread of COVID-19, how much it has caused major transportation, that transformation in the way we work and in the way we live. Immobility has become the new standard of life. All cities have been focusing on enhancing connectivity and mobility for a long time. 
We now need to articulate, fine tune, and reimagine how cities should be organized, connected, and governed, and how space should be redesigned in its new normal to meet new demands of our citizens and of their self. Another challenge is, when we look ahead, we need to turn this crisis into a moment of leapfrogging development. It is already a major challenge to protect life, health, and work of its citizens in time of crisis. But the bigger challenge is that we could not miss this rare opportunity to drastically redesign and to rework the cities, which has hitherto been impossible. We need to act fast and aggressively. And all the leaders in our session have expressed a strong leadership here. From them, we have new perspectives to share with you. First, this abrupt immobility has paradoxically accelerated the speed of innovation, especially in communication and logistical technology. For urban development, this has become a strategic tool for the leapfrogging, bypassing regu regulatory hurdles, and cities have shown its strength in swiftly, swiftly partnering with these emerging digital business to rebuild the city back then. The second point, e-mobility also unexpectedly encourages redeveloping urban space to meet the new norms of the livelihood. Redesigning public space into a more open and a more green space has become the new norm of inclusive communication with its citizens. It's not just a smart, but smart and green. Green has regained its importance in when in intercity movement is restricted, but the intra-city movement is needed more than ever. The third point, the more uncertainty looms large, the more cities find its importance in setting the direction of development. Not only in finding solutions to tangible problems, but also to reimagine the future of cities and citizenship and to foster local identity and ownership. Now we have found three, uh, three key approaches to tackle this. First, resilience is now at the heart of urban development. Here, resilience does not only mean high quality infrastructure, but rather resilience of health, livelihood, and work. It is more of an integrated system that empowers flexibility to allow rapid transformation to reach new equilibrium in post-crisis society. Our cities have been the leader in showing this flexibility by balancing investing on mobility of goods when mobility of people is in decline. Second point, our approach focuses on partnership. Partnership is how leaders reap the benefit of cutting-edge technology. Success lies in broadening and deepening the scope of partnership with new businesses, new academia, and with the citizens. The third point, we focus on diversity. City is a place of diversity, and it is the norm of urban space. It shapes how we work and how we live. It is this diversity, and among them, among the various actors, we emphasize the importance to support children and the youth who are the torchbearer of future in this new normal age. Their well-being are tied to livability and resilience of the city and its future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Aizawa Nobuhiro. The last report is the Parallel Session D, theme, Sustainable Tourism in the New Era. Ms. Suzuki Hiroko, if you please. Distinguished uh, city of Fukuoka. 
Fukuoka Mayor Takashima san, uh, distinguished uh, UN Habitat Director Mr. Koresama san. Uh, today uh, I, I, ex I want to express my deep, deepest gratitude to organize this wonderful summit. My name is uh, Hiroko Suzuki, Deputy Chief of UNWTO Regional Support Office for Asia and the Pacific. Uh, today, uh, I, uh, we, have, we have uh, discussed about sustainable tourism in new era. Today we have gained useful knowledge and initiated innovative ideas to advance sustainable tourism. And I'm going to present the report of our session. Firstly, uh, I will explain current situation and issues surrounding cities. Firstly, uh, the tourism industry has been growing steadily generating 10% of world GDP and one in 10 jobs globally. However, the number of international tourists in 2020 decreased by 74% compared to the previous year due to the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. By region, Asia Pacific suffered the largest decline with 83.5% drop. Tourism has a cross-sectional industry supporting a variety of economic sector of our country. However, it is vulnerable to external influences. The COVID-19 had a major impact not only tourism facilities and accommodations, but also the local economy, including restaurants and retail entertainment and primary industry that support local production and consumption. In particular, SMEs, which account for 80% of tourism industry, suffered tremendous damage, and it is estimated that approximately 100 million jobs are at risk. And it is predicted that tourism will not return to pre-pandemic level until 2024 or later. Second, we discussed new perspective and ideas in four points. Firstly, in the construction process, under the concept of build back better, it is necessary to devise ways to prevent reoccurrence of tourism related issues, such as carrying capacity of destinations, which has been a problem in the past. Secondly, due to the travel risk uh, travel restrictions caused by COVID-19, there is a growing awareness on promotion of nearby tourism attractions and authentic experience. And it is becoming more important not only set the quantitative goals of increased number of tourists, but also to balance this pre preservation and utilization of local cultural and environmental resources to seek harmonization of tourism development and growth with the well-being of local residents. Thirdly, uh, tourism should be a mutually beneficial relationship between tourists and the local community. Hence, uh, there is a need to introduce systems in which tourists also contribute to sustainable tourism development in destinations. Also, it is important to understand the comprehensive impact of tourism on the community and to promote evidence-based tourism management. Digital technologies and awareness raising of responsible tourist behavior. Fourth, in addition, it is necessary to work on developing tourist, tourism product with low risk of infection and avoiding congestion of tourists since appropriate uh, countermeasures against infection disease in tourist area are now required. Last, uh, we are discussing direction of uh, initiatives. Uh, we emphasize uh, four points. First, uh, cities must promptly implement all necessary measures to support tourism industry. Secondly, for the recovery of tourism, it 
it is important to local tourism stakeholders to work together to reduce the burden and improve sustainability by measuring and evaluating the impact and contribution of tourism to the local society, culture, and environment. Thirdly, it is also necessary to promote responsible tourism, implementation of marketing promotion that respond to changing circumstances, transformation of tourist services, and creation of demand by utilizing digital technologies as well as development of new tourism products that utilize uh, national and uh, cultural resources. And lastly, the city will work together with various tourism-related entities and local communities to improve the environment for welcoming tourists in a safe and secure manner. This is my report. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Suzuki Hiroko. Now again, thank you all for your attention. Now, uh, we would like to ask the co-host, Mr. Kurosawa Atsushi, Regional Representative of UN Habitat, Regional Office for Asia and the Pacific, to summarize the two-day summit. Say if you please. Thank you. Honorable mayors and city leaders and distinguished participants and moderators, to wrap up uh, today, very engaging, rich, and thought-provoking discussion, the Secretariat has summarized uh, nice, very nicely uh, main discussion points and suggestions on way forward. Uh, in a document entitled APCS Commitment to 2022. So, um, represent all involved, I did the commitment. The 13th Asia Pacific City Summit Special Edition was held over two days on the 26th and 27th of October 2021, hosted jointly by Focus City and United Nations Human Settlement Program, <coughs> UN Habitat, Regional Office for Asia Pacific. It was the first summit uh, to be held online and was attended by 38 cities from 14 countries from around the world, the largest number uh, to date. The cities of Asia Pacific region were drawn to the front lines to stand against the unprecedented, unprecedented crisis caused by uh, COVID-19 across various areas such as medicine, economics, education, community, and more. The cities of Asia Pacific region turned this crisis into a chance to create new values and carve a path toward a better future. In the Asia Pacific region, the Asia Pacific City Summit has been an intercity network built over 25 years with a spirit of mutual aid and mutual benefits. Therefore, it was decided that uh, 13th Asia Pacific City Summit would be held twice, both this year and next, to discuss new urban development at this turning point into a new era. In this uh, 13th Asia Pacific City Summit Special Edition, powerful debates were held on ongoing urban issues under the theme of potential of cities in the face of crisis. Furthermore, expertise was gathered by a variety of parties such as international organizations, private companies and universities, as well as cities. We have thus been able to identify and organize issues for next year's summit. Through this two-day program, it was found that the effects of COVID-19 permeate all levels of cooperation. Especially during crisis, cities bear heavy responsibility to take measures most closely related to the residents. We have also seen that it is vital for the, their leaders to demonstrate their leadership and show a clear vision for the future. 
in addition, uh, we have shared our awareness that while introducing uh, innovative ideas, technologies, and design, technology and design is essential for new urban development. It, it is also effective to rediscover and deconstruct the knowledge gathered so far. Moreover, uh, it was demonstrated that from now, it will become even more important to promote harmony with the SDGs concerning the environment, inclusiveness, and diversity, and contribute to the business well-being, as well as economic rationality. At this major turning point into new era, in which the values and concepts that were once seen as a conventional have drastically changed. We have renewed our determination to promote innovation, innovative urban development that is suitable for this new era. On the occasion of this uh, closing ceremony of the summit, I announced the APCS commitment to 2022 to confirm the success of this Asia Pacific City Summit and connect it to the next year's summit. Number one, the cities of the Asia Pacific region shall demonstrate their abilities to, to the full and actively utilize the network built by the Asia Pacific City Summit to overcome the crisis they are currently facing and build a better future. Number two, the cities of the Asia Pacific region shall use the knowledge and awareness gained at this Asia Pacific City Summit to take concrete actions suited to the situation in each city. Number three, the cities of the Asia Pacific region shall share the result of specific actions that they took to overcome the crisis at the Asia Pacific City Summit next summer. And by sharing this, contribute to the, to the sustainable and enduring development of the whole Asia Pacific region. Number four, the next Asia Pacific, uh, Asia -Pacific City Summit shall be held under the theme of new values new cities in the summer 2022 in Fukuoka City, Japan. That's it. Uh, before uh, handing over to Mayor Takashima, on behalf of UN Habitat, uh, I express again our deep appreciation to all of you for your participation, engagement, and lot of contribution to make this summit so successful and very fruitful. My thanks also go to the uh, interpreters and all the staff uh, who worked very hard to make this summit uh, very successful. Without your support, uh, this summit would not be so successful. Thank you very much. So uh, I look forward to meeting you all again in Fukuoka next year. Let's have fun and enjoy Hakata together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kurosawashi. Now, to conclude the 13th Asian Pacific City Summit Special Edition, as your host, Mayor Takashima Soichiro of Fukuoka City will deliver the closing remarks. Mayor Takashima Soichiro, if you please. I would like to say a few words on behalf of the organizers of the 30th Asian Pacific City Summit Special Edition at this uh, closing ceremony. First, I would like to thank Executive Director Shali of UN Habitat for her message and to Director Tats of UN Habitat, Regional Director Tim Chelling of the UN Environment Program and Division Head Akumauchi of the OECD for their speeches. I also want to thank every person joining this summit. This summit has, been, has seen two days of active dialogues over the main theme, the potential of cities in the face of crisis. It has been a valuable opportunity to share the rich knowledge, experience, and expertise of international organizations, universities, private companies, and the record number of representatives from 
38 cities from 14 countries around the globe. The experiences of those dealing with cities have touched our hearts with their sense of urgency and persuasiveness, especially during the crisis that is COVID-19. Through this two-day summit, we have heard key words on topics needed for cities to recover and grow, such as SDGs, well-being, green recovery, and more. We cities will be expected to use these important factors in our policies and urban development in the future. It was mentioned in the commitment that we must use the knowledge learned from this summit and its network to take real action to solve our challenges. I hope that new urban development will accelerate uh, under new values after this summit. I'm also looking forward to sharing examples and achievements at the next summit. The next summit will be held in Fukuoka City in summer 2022. The FINA World Swimming Championships will also be held in Fukuoka, the May, before the summit. I believe next year will be an important year to restart international exchange. I look forward to seeing everyone who has joined this summit in person in Fukuoka in 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Takashima Soichiro. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 13th Asian Pacific City Summit Special Edition. We hope the summit provided a beneficial opportunity to obtain new ideas and innovation and information for the future. And this year's summit was held virtually as a special edition. And next year, as we said, we will hold the 13th Asian Pacific City Summit face to face here in Fukuoka. So we really look uh, forward to seeing you here in Fukuoka next year. So thank you very much for participating in the 13th Asian Pacific City Summit special edition. Thank you very much and arigato.